11th, uh, 2019. And I enjoy, uh, invite you to join with us in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In case of fire, there are two ways to exit the council chambers. To my left and your right, through those doors, turn left again down the stairs, and at the base of the stairs, turn left again and outside of the building. Or the best way and quickest, perhaps, would be at the rear of the chambers, through the double doors down the steps, and again, away from the building. Uh, Secretary, take the roll. Charles Dern. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nicola Fakus. Here. Mary Scutt. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella. Yeah, here. Guillermo Salazar is absent, and Richard Suzak is here. Uh, Linda DeGray will be sitting in for the absent commissioner until until and or if she arrives. If and when. <laughs> yeah, if and when. Uh, approval of minutes of March 28th. So moved. Second. Mo motion's made and second. Any additions, errors, or omissions? Um, yes, I did watch the meeting on television. Um, there were a couple of things that I had questions on, as soon as I find them. <laughs> on page nine, um, one, two, the third paragraph, uh, Lori asked the commissioners to share for the record reasons for, an, for or against the application. You've got Commissioner Suzak's uh, comments, uh, Commissioner Nelson's, but there were no other commissioners, and I believe there was one against on that one, so. Right, that was mine. I don't have that on page nine. Page nine. It's up at the top. It's up at the top where it says uh, under reference vote plan. One zero. Right under it's the vote, 410. Okay. And there was nothing about. Um, Anybody saying any the, the the person that voted against? There's no comment on well, that. There is earlier uh, in there yeah. the reason. But it should be in there. Well, just yeah. reiterated. And then there was one other thing. Just one. Just one. Um, reason was because Linda said no. <laughs> <laughs> page 15, last paragraph. Commissioner Suzak stated that he would like to see the regarding of the area and updated site. Regrading. Okay, the, okay, maybe that was my misreading. I'm bad then. All right, that was me. Sorry. That's it. Okay. That's it. It was re regarding the regrading. Uh, I was reading it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All in favor, this is ended, I guess. And one, ab uh, one, abstain one abstention. Linda, you No, I watched. Okay. You watched it. I watched it. the meeting. So, no. Six uh, zero one. Okay, get that right. Uh, at this point, the meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes uh, comments, concerns, and opinions regarding. Uh, Opinion uh, relating to planning and zoning in the town of Enfield <coughs> from anyone who is present, provided uh, you may at no time discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on this agenda, any matter that's part of an open public hearing of the commission, or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending. Anyone like to address the commission under those conditions? Anyone like to address the commission under those conditions? Last call to address the commission under those conditions. Hearing none, uh, we'll move on to uh, capital improvement budget presentations. Good evening. And for the record, gentlemen, please uh, name, an <laughs> name an address or, or occupation, I guess. 
And who are you representing? Who are you? Who So good evening, everyone. My name is Donald Nunes. I'm the Director of Public Works. And I'm uh, John Wilcox. I'm the Director of Finance. <clears throat> so I'll wait for oh, I'm down here. two more. Yeah. One for me. So tonight we are representing the town manager um, and we are bringing the capital improvement plan to you folks as part of the town charter, which is under <coughs> chapter six, section 3D. And I'm just gonna read to you for those who have, uh, may be newer to the commission and things like that. I just wanna read to you why, why we're here. Um, and that states, as part of the annual budget or as a separate report attached thereto, the manager shall present a program previously considered and acted on by the town planning and zoning commission in accordance with the provisions of the general statutes concerning municipal improvements of proposed capital projects for the ensuing fiscal year and for the five fiscal years thereafter. Estimates of the cost of such projects shall be submitted by each department, office, or agency annually in the form and manner prescribed by the manager. The manager shall recommend to the council those projects to be undertaken during the ensuing fiscal year and the method of financing the same. So again, we are here, and what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is provide just a 30,000 foot general overview and summary. Um, John is here if you want to get into weeds on some of the other ones or some of the, and break it down, it's up to you folks, but I'm just gonna go through and just provide a high level summary of what we're gonna be doing. Uh, we are spending $1,666,200 on a vehicle replacement plan. Uh, this is for approximately seven uh, police vehicles, four heavy duty uh, DPW truck, ambulance and other sorted equipment, buses and miscellaneous vehicles that comprise the town and uh, town of Enfield fleet. With the buses, we anticipate grant funding for 50% of those bus, of the cost of those buses. For public works equipment, we are planning on spending uh, $55,006 and that will allow for two mowers, two rug cleaning machines and an exterior window washing system and a number of replacement, I believe it's nine, nine or 10 uh, snow blowers for our buildings and grounds crew. We are, we are uh, proposing $788,000 for school facilities. We're gonna put in 50,000 for um, repairs, roof repairs at various school facilities, more emergency basements, uh, the replacement of the Barnard School roof for $580,000 and $8,000 to restripe the tracks at the Enfield High School and the Annex. Additionally, the, there will be $150,000 will fund the Board of Ed sinking fund, which is, uh, John can explain the sinking funds afterwards. $40,000 we are uh, allowing for the refuse and resource management for the containment and disposal of all of our accumulated street sweepings. Every time that we clean out a catch basin, uh, it is considered, we can't just go dump that anywhere and spread it out, it's considered uh, a type of polluted soil, so we have to handle it differently, and this will help get rid of all that soil. We clean half the town every year, and then the other half the next. We're on a two-year cycle for that. We have allotted $428,825 for town building uh, repairs, maintenance, and monitoring. This includes various facilities at $100,000, roof repairs again for 25, a new heating system for either the MS building, a vehicle exhaust evacuation system at our fleet services facility, waste oil furnace at the DPW cold storage facility, $8,500 for a new, I'm sorry, $75,000 for a new fuel tank at the, at the police department, which we have to replace in two years by law because it is a, it's getting to that age where we have mandatory to remove the fuel tank, and a waste oil monitor for the waste oil tank that we have at our facility at DPW. In addition, 150,000 will be will be put into the town property plant and equipment sinking fund. And again, John can go into sinking funds. There's 584,500 dollars for um, for other DPW property. 17,000 of that is for a diesel exhaust fluid system, which is a new thing for all brand new diesel trucks or newer diesel trucks that we are mandated to have. Um, it does system to make sure it it does perform. 
it cleans up basically the, the exhaust on it and basically creates exhaust and makes water and, and just nitrogen out of it. And, but again, all brand, all newer diesel engines require that. <clears throat> and we're also going to spend or allot $567,500 for, uh, it'll partially fund the reconstruction of Orlando Drive culvert, which is not, which is separate from the incident that we had on Orlando Drive with the sewer. This is the actual big seven foot culvert that crosses the road. It would be seven seven hundred eighty-five thousand uh, dollars for ongoing repair and rehabilitation um, for the for the roads program. That we have we're putting in five hundred thousand dollars of that. We are mandated to a hundred thousand dollars that would go for miscellaneous road projects and crack sealing throughout town, and thirty-five thousand dollars for street sign replacements for those that are uh, out of currently out of code for our, everything from stop signs to street signs to other speed limit things in addition, et cetera. And 150,000 for the town infrastructure sinking fund. For other projects, there's 146,581 dollars. Um, Seven thousand of that is going to go for security blinds at the child development center. Thirty thousand for a cell block intercom at the police department. Hundred thousand dollars to upgrade the joint operation centers at the police department, and nine thousand five hundred eighty-one dollars for the uh, SWAT team. That totals $4,494,112. And with other um, subtractions that we have from Honeywell, state funding, and the like, uh, we are down that net, that net capital projects for that is $3,469,790. <clears throat> because water pollution control is a separate entity, water pollution is not considered part. We're separating that on budget and also on capital. Um, we are planning on putting $200,000 into a sewer relining program. Uh, for those who uh, don't think the sewers we're relining, instead of basically digging it up, we're actually putting in a sleeve that goes into the pipe. Uh, it's cured. It's epoxy cured with steam and all that kind of stuff like that. Then you go in with a machine and cut out holes for it uh, to allow this, the sewage to go in. That way we're not digging up the road. It's all done from manhole to manhole. So it saves a considerable amount of time. And it has just it has a very long warranty of 30 to 50 years depending on the type of in the size so that does help us out there's a hundred thousand dollars put in for major sewer line replacements uh, this is mostly on an emergency basis It'd be five hundred fifty thousand for pump station upgrades um, we have 16 pump stations throughout town <clears throat> and with the recent referendum we had 36 million that is being dedicated for the plant itself and there's another uh, the balance of that is going to be towards pump stations and collection systems, but we need so much. Our pump stations are aging, and they really need some repairs. Uh, $10,000 for manhole frame and covers. There's $60,000 for the ammonia nitrogen sensors. There's a lot of you don't need to know. But it's kind of what we use those for at the tanks and stuff like that, but it really helps us out. This is all going to be computerized, and we can, we can adjust chemicals to make sure that the water is cleaner going out and, and the like. Uh, $75,000 for a CMOM study. CMOM is an acronym for Capacity Management Operations and Maintenance. Uh, we were under a, at the time, a few years ago, we were under a deep violation with it. So what we're doing is basically outlining what we need to do to make everything better. And this goes to um, classify <coughs> deep and like for their, it, this is going to help us get through deep and getting rid of that violation. There's $500,000 dedicated to collection systems in advance of roads work. So what we are planning on doing is try to do as much sewer work as we can before we dig up the road, uh, instead of having to do the brand new road and dig it up afterwards for problems. So this was that money is going to be used for. There's going to be $100,000 for a fuel tank replacement. <clears throat> Again, WPC is in a similar position. Their, their fuel tanks is going to be, need to be replaced uh, due to age. And we're going to be dedicating $75,000 for a 200 kilowatt portable generator. Uh, this will be able to this generator will be able to run the four largest pump stations right now in case of emergency and a power edge. We have nothing there to run those, so that that is what that is for. For for a total WPC of $1,670,000. So that is the grand, quick, swift overview of our capital program. And if you'd like to. Learn about anything else or have any questions? Questions from the commissioners. <clears throat> Ken, go ahead for uh, a couple things. On the um, portable generator, the um, 
The four largest pump stations, are they located right at WPC? No, they're, they're spread out, like South Maple. I think. How do you great... run four separate stations with one generator? <coughs> if one goes out, we're hoping that there's no catastrophic failure on four others. Oh, so they already have <coughs> generators at them. This is a backup. This is a backup. We've had one go down uh, already, and we, we have to bring something in <coughs> to, to handle it. Yes. The fuel tank replacement at um, WPC, understand, got to replace it. And I was going to comment um, on the police department. You put a good explanation for WPC that it is at quite a distance from DPW. Therefore, they need their own fuel. But the police <clears throat> department's not. I mean, the police department's, what, 300 feet if you go straight across the back to DPW? Yep. And don't we do all the repairs for their cruisers that are, aren't under warranty at DPW? Yes. So... Did we put a canopy up at DPW over the pumps yet? We have not. No. Wouldn't it, in my opinion, it'd make more sense to put the canopy up at DPW, eliminate one of the fueling stations so we can control um, the use of fuel in the town and possible uh, a possible spill by containing everything at DPW that we possibly can. Um, I'm not really sure how this works, but, I mean, that'd be 75000 they could even either apply to DPW's budget for something they need, which I know they need a lot, and you're really not <clears throat> inconveniencing the police because it's literally 200 feet away and the cruisers get serviced there anyways. So to me, it makes more sense, but I'm not sure how what our role is on this. Like I know last year I had serious issues with all the money at Fermi's pool. <laughs> so, I mean, do we you know, postpone this, discuss it with the council? I mean, after everybody speaks, or is this just a yes or a no? You know, Clinton, if I could answer your question, though. Sure. <clears throat> the police department is a 24-7 operation. Yeah. We are not. So we, you know, we close at 3.30 and we secure, you know, we secure our property at, you know, at 40 Moody Road at between 3.30 and like 5 o'clock, depending on when we leave. Mm -hmm. So that operation stuff, we would have, there's a whole lot more to the logistics of having them fuel there. They will be fueling there during the process of putting in an above ground storage tank, the new one. They will have to fuel at our facility and we're going to have to make, make do with it for a couple months. But um, that's, that's the reason behind it again, just because just the sheer logistics of it and security and the like. EMS and the fire <clears throat> departments fuel up at your facility, don't they? Yes, but they fuel during, we restrict them during certain times during the day. We have, we have very strict times and when non DPW departments or divisions can use our fueling our fueling stations so it doesn't interfere with us right but they're 20 the fire department and ems is 24 7 also and but we restrict them to before 3 30. right my point is we could do the same with the police department they have to fuel their cars up from seven to three or whatever but anyways that's just that's my input on this hmm. yes i have uh, two questions and uh, they both are for the roofs. Does the town now have a list of all the roofs of all the town buildings and the conditions and when they'll be uh, in need of repair? So a replacement, just like uh, the gas pumps, you have a set time mm -hmm. that you have to replace them? We just recently uh, purchased, a, it's a terrible name, it's a Dude Solutions software for that <clears throat> and it's a work order management system and it's also an inventory asset thing management part of it uh, we are doing the annex to start with uh, as part of that with all the all the things at the annex even though it's again it, there's a lot of programming there so we're going to start with that building and work our way out mm -hmm. afterwards but we we do have the next four roofs that we want to do um, but after that we we are we are working on filling in that database using that new software Great. My other um, question is, um, I know that money's tight and the roofs are expensive, uh, but it would be nice, I, it's my understanding we're getting some kind of a grant writer on board eventually, it'd be nice if they could look at possible solar, you know, on the roofs down the road so that um, the town could get some benefit out of it. Just a thought. And okay. thank you. That was okay. a great presentation. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead. There are um, a couple of things I've observed that I think should be thought about, and if there's not space in this budget, maybe the next budget. <clears throat> At the senior center, 
I've noticed some folks struggling with walkers trying to reach for the door and it would be good if there was a type of door like we have right downstairs where as you approach it just opens. Automatic I think, doors? Yeah, I, I think that would be um, good for safety reasons so that people don't trip. And also um, where they park facing the building, I think it would be good if there were some bollards just in case um, a vehicle doesn't stop. Um, the, other, the other thing that I've noticed, and I've had the occasion to um, do myself, is walk 190. And it would be great if there was a sidewalk that went from Route 5 down to, down to Hasbroville. <laughs> because I've, I've, I've encountered people walking along the road, and um, sometimes it's dangerous for the pedestrians. Duly noted. Thank you. <clears throat> Just for information, Nick, the friends of the <clears throat> senior center are putting in automatic doors. Oh, are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're financing that. Mm -hmm. So that project is in the works at the moment. <laughs> oh, good. Good. <clears throat> Anyone else? Uh, in answer to uh, Kenny's question, uh, what, what do you want or how is this conveyed with our, our suggestions or how does the council hear what has been said? Uh, this, this didn't come in under the 824 referral, so um, I think that it's more just informational for the commission, but you could also you could just make a comment saying that it appears to meet the intent of the plan of conservation and development, in that um, it's uh, going to uh, help um, promote the maintenance and repair and of our town buildings and infrastructure. So, I mean, it's all relative to that. Um, I'm not sure if there's really anything that you're supposed to do. Um, well, no, I, I know we aren't. Other times we just, a uh, recommendation, but there yeah. were uh, thoughts from some of the commissioners on things that might be included possibly this year or, ne or whenever. Or excluded. Or excluded. I mean, if we have no input on it, it shouldn't be in front of us. And if we have to just vote or That's just not, pass I, it through. Other years, that's basically what's happened because we haven't had many thoughts, really. And I'm just wondering, can we send, or can we send minutes? Recommendations. Or recommendations? Well, even like if we had this, we could have reviewed it and asked questions before. I mean, we don't even have anybody here to ask the questions too, because the council is the one who really makes the final decision. You know, they don't even have a say on this. They're given the papers and go sell it. <laughs> you know, which they did a great job, but, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I've sat and gone through all these things and. Well, other years we haven't really haven't had questions on it. It's, it's, uh, or. But that's what I'm saying yeah. because planning and zoning really doesn't know about all of these issues. So why is it here that my question would be then, why is this here? But if we have no say on the matter or we don't understand what it is. Well, you could always deny <clears throat> you have a say in it. But if you have specific things, I would assume you'd go to the council as a unofficial rep of the Planning and Zoning Commission or as a private citizen and voice your um, concerns. That's what I would do. Right. And that's why I was saying, do we can we postpone this and discuss it with the council? I mean, I don't think you can postpone it. Uh, why can't we add just the, 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 the notes from the commissioners or the questions from the commissioners that were asked and just attach them to as part of the uh, referral? The, I was going to say the referral or the person that makes the uh, our motion as part of the motion. If we make it part of the motion, they have to accept it or read it, I would guess. Somebody has to. Yeah, I think that that would be, you know, a, a good way to go. Um, 
you know, like I say, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that this may have been, should have been under A24, um, but we have a whole different section on our agenda as to how that works. But um, I would just, you know, make a statement that you think that in general it meets the plan of conservation and development, and these are some of our concerns right. with these the proposal. Are the, these are the concerns. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you're, somebody's composing that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me ask a question. By, by, by the minutes, or I'm sorry, by, by your presentation, apparently the uh, town is now responsible for maintenance, uh, or school, school maintenance? Yes. And we have been for years. Yes. Well, I know it was given back to them for mm -hmm. a while, and I until now didn't realize that we town had taken it back yeah i think it was 2005 we took it back along with the custodians as well yeah okay yeah. all right dpw was because responsible I was on for the council custodians. at the time we took it back and then the, the council after gave it back mm -hmm. and then so it's a back which is good okay rick are you ready i mean are you doing it <laughs> Mr. Okay. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that the, you know the, the Planning and Zoning Commission recognizes the, um, I, I guess, capital improvement budget plan, and that for the, we believe that it, it definitely meets the intent of the plan of conservation and the development. But we do have some comments and concerns that are not limited to number one. The fueling stations associated with the, the police station and the DPW, whether they can be combined or not. There's also concern about the sidewalks along Route 190 to provide a, a safer avenue for any pedestrians that might be using the Route 190 corridor from the Route 5 inter intersection down towards, you know, the shopping center areas. And um, I'm not sure if there's any other concerns. Has it, has it Downtown Hazardville. And, and downtown Hazardville. Oh, and extended all the way to downtown Hazardville. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, with Excuse those me? concerns and. I, I'm sorry, there was also a comment, a, a consideration of solar for roofing. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, yes, okay, I'm sorry. And, and the third was, was the, the, you know, the possibility of utilizing some solar panels to supplement the fuel efficiencies of some of our buildings. And, um, Commissioner Ladd mentioned that uh, the friends of the senior center are putting in the doors, but um, it'd be good if there were some bollards there too okay. in the parking lot. I guess the fourth uh, comment might be the fact that, you know, the, for some safety concerns at the senior center that some bollards be included along the, the parking areas so that the building is protected against any potential mishap that might occur. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Just got one question. Any he discussion? was going to explain the, sink, the sinking fund. He was going to explain well what, uh, the term. Well, let him do it after we design. do this, uh, if he would. Uh, okay. The motion's made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? I, I'm not sure we're supposed to make this our wish list by adding stuff to it. We're supposed to discuss this list itself. Well, that's know. part of the, this list. Uh, uh, it's it's making suggestions to it that it could be refined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you you are doing that. I don't. Well, you know, in a perfect world, we'd add solar panels to every building in Enfield, but <laughs> yeah, it, we got to put the roofs on the building, and it takes serious money to do that. And I, I agree with you 100% about the sidewalks, but. You know, I, I just, I think our direction is just to review this because that's what they had the money to do, mm -hmm. you know. Well, if, the if I may, if we may, again, with the, yes, that is what we, and this is what we're, we've been charged with this year, but again, we could have that for future, mm -hmm. for future projects. Yeah, for, so, I mean, that, that could thoughts. be, you could take that tack that it could be on a, for a, on a future CIP or, you know, again, next year or whatever it is, we can look at it that way if, if you want to take that route. Future or thoughts, or yes. even maybe have somebody from planning and zoning sit in when the council starts discussing the CIP budget, because if we're involved, we should be more involved than just, okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, appoint a member or two when it comes down to it. 
because if we got to approve it, we should be part of the process. You know, just I I agree, but I you no, have I to understand. get yourself in the, invited somehow. Well, hopefully, they're watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to. Not yeah. likely, but hopefully. <laughs> okay. Any, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Now, uh, if you'd explain. Okay. Um, the sinking funds are in the, in the 2019 budget, which is the current year. Um, we established three sinking funds, um, which are allowed under the Connecticut general statutes. Um, those three are for uh, town building, um, town property, plant, and equipment. Okay, Board of Ed, building uh, property, plant, and equipment, and town infrastructure. And so we can set us, they work similar to a capital, um, their, their regular capital funds where we set money aside. These are more general um, and they don't, they don't lapse. Like um, we have, the charter says we have three years to, to spend the, um, the, uh, funds that we set aside for CIP for so for this uh, um, you know any of this money in the school facilities or whatever they are um, those monies have to be we have to start spending them within three years or they or they return are re supposed to be returned to the general fund um, with these ones they don't but they also have to be used for building property plant and equipment or whatever the, the fund was designated for so for example we could use on uh, the town building property plant and equipment fund we could use it for um replacing replacing the boiler in the town which we shouldn't have to do because we just replaced it it was part of the energy performance thing but um that's just an example of, of something it, it could be used for any town building could be used for windows it could be used for um, piping it could be used for whatever elevators something like that but it can't be used for a sidewalk the, the town building fund can't be used for a sidewalk that would be more of an infrastructure any questions for that or further? okay thank you very much um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to compliment them for the presentation it's um it's it was good it was clear yeah oh yeah so that's right <laughs> yeah very good thank, thank you. you thank you you want i think they were extra uh copies you, yeah copies do you want you want them back No, no bond releases, no old business, new business site plan review, SPR 1774. Uh, this is a triple A, triple A people here. Yep. Okay, if you come forward, we'll, I don't. <coughs> this is an SPR. The okay. uh, secretary, take the roll. Here. Charles Dern. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella. Here. Rand Richard Suzak's here. Linda DeGray will be sitting in for the absent commissioner. Oh, we have somebody who knows how to push the button there. Got a little nervous there for a second. Um, 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Matt Bruton. I'm an engineer from BL Companies. With me is uh, Jess Bates, who's also an engineer with BL Companies. Um, we're here on behalf of the AAA project at 25 Hazard Ave. Um, I'm sure most of you remember us. We were here maybe a month and a half, two months ago. Um, let me pull up some. No. No, they haven't switched yet. What that was, a, there was a flash all of a sudden. I think I saw grass. It's a field. So, as you hopefully see on your screen, and anyone in the public that's looking, um, obviously this is the previously approved plan that you saw about two months ago. Um, Twenty-five Hazard Ave. Um, Hazard Ave is along the bottom of the screen, and Freshwater Boulevard um, is along this side. Um, this is the AAA building. It's 11,000 square feet with the uh, parking lot um, being reconfigured between the Freshwater Boulevard um, new building and the uh, end cap, which is uh, currently Bob's. This is a blow up of uh, that corner of the parcel. Um, obviously, the, the new um, proposed uh, grading and pavement are all shown in gray. Everything else you see around the perimeter is the uh, aerial of the existing um, plaza, which wouldn't, wasn't going to be touched. This is a blow up of the compensatory storage area. Um, this building that you see currently on the side here, that's the current Chick-fil-A restaurant. Um, so this is a compensatory storage system that is going under the parking lot adjacent to Chick-fil-A. For reference, that is up here um, on the overall plan. So uh, the developer and the landowner are seeking a site plan modification to minimize the impact of this project on the shopping plaza and to reduce fill in the floodplain. Uh, we've done that a, a couple ways. Um, we've regraded the site to minimize fill in the floodplain. Um, as you can see from this overall plan, um, we've kind of pulled back everything to keep it kind of only essential to what AAA needs and haven't expanded beyond that limit. Um, so the new gray that you see here is the regraded parking lot. Um, green shows the new landscaped areas um, and the building obviously is in the same location. Um, same thing up front, we do have some compensatory storage that's required adjacent to the Chick-fil-A um, parcel. So to kind of give you a blow up area of um, what actually changed so you can see it, um, we are trying to blend this development back into the existing parking lot layout. And we've done that um, in this area by removing a retaining wall and using the existing drive aisle to um, reduce the amount of fill on the property. Um, this in turn um, keeps fill out of the floodplain area and also reduces the amount of compensatory storage that we have to provide. Um, so as you can tell before, we had a two-way drive aisle on this side of the building. We had a one-way drive aisle on this side, which is something that you had requested at the last meeting. And before, we had another drive aisle that was um, adjacent to AAA. Uh, we've gotten rid of that, which I think will help circulation through the building for the, um, the service bays. And we're using the uh, existing um, drive aisle as uh, access on this north side of the building. Um, the uh, compensatory storage that was needed for the previous application uh, was about 125,000 cubic yards. Um, we provided 127. With this new grading and shrinking down of the uh, project and the parking lot, uh, we're required to have 105 cubic yards of compensatory storage, and we're um, providing 107. So what we need is what we uh, what we provide, um, and it's a, a reduction of what we're putting in, but it's not a reduction of what's actually required on site. I know there was probably some concern with the um, planners presenting this previously, um, thinking that we're reducing what is required, um, but we're pro proposing what is needed for the um, AAA. We're just uh, reducing what AAA needs. All other aspects of the project um, have remained the same. Um, the building placement is still in the same spot. Um, building architecture has not changed. 
um, truck and traffic flow have remained the same. We've included that one-way drive aisle um, in the front of the building, which was a concern the last time we were here, um, and we still comply with the applicable zoning regulations. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions if you guys have any. Because I have a question. In terms of on the west side of the building, is, is there going to be some and, and you know, because because before you used to have a drive aisle that went around the building, and, and and now all of a sudden it's sort of a dead end on the west side where you if if you park there you got to sort of do a K turn in order to get out or else you're stuck. So you know, so uh, the question is actually twofold in terms of you know because of the fact that there's a significant change in elevation between you know on the north side of the building because of the fact that you're, you're sort of creating a you know sort of a, a raised platform for the, that upper level parking but the, you know the, the the lower level grade is four feet below that and i noticed that you're putting a lot of landscaping there but you know it is is there a, a need for like some kind of a, a fence you know some kind of a decorative fence so that so if somebody hits the gas pedal instead of the brake he doesn't fall four feet down the slope and sort of create the havoc you know, everywhere? Absolutely, hear your concern. So this is the previous plan. Um, just so everyone recognizes, I believe what you're pointing out is we had this drive aisle on the north end of the building. So there was complete circulation around at the same elevation as the finished floor. Can uh, you back on the TV so oh. we can see what he's looking at? Yeah, put it back on the TV if you would. I think I have control of that. No, you don't, but they hear us. <laughs> there it is, they did. Okay, sorry, I'll start over. Well, they um, hear us. So. This drive aisle up here is what you're talking about. So we previously had a full circulation around the entire building at the right. same level of the finished floor of this AAA. Um, this parking lot down here and here are lower, and we had a, a retaining wall that went along where my mouse is now. So in the, the new proposal, we have eliminated that drive aisle at the same elevation of the AAA. Um, so the, this area here is all lower, this would be higher, and we've eliminated the retaining wall, but we still have the grade change, and we've done that with a landscape slope. There is a guide rail on top of that, so no one's gonna go up and down. Um, but the, we actually think the functionality of cutting off that drive aisle on the north side of this building will help because everything on this end and this end is through the service bays and uh w with the change of the drive aisle to a one way here there's actually not going to be any cross traffic coming from this building and any confusion with cars turning right because now every there's no ability for a car to come along this side of the building um, so we think it actually simplifies the layout um, AAA has no concerns internally with their functionality. Um, and even though this is lower than the finished floor, it still provides the fire um, department with access around all four sides of the building. Yeah, my, my main concern is you do have some kind of a barrier. There is a barrier. Okay, I couldn't yes. see it on the plans because I, I looked all over the place, but, you know, it, nowhere did I see, you know, some kind of a fencing or barrier, you know, yep. a, so, like a timber thing, you know, something yes. that's yep. substantial enough to stop a car. Stop a car, correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. I have one question. You are going to still expand the tank that's there now, <coughs> though, right? Pretty yes. So I'll bring that up. Uh, we lost the picture again. <laughs> oh. There it is. <coughs> you see it on your screen? Yes. yes. So the where I'm hovering the original tank. Yes. Where you have this. Where my mouse is now, this this black outline that has no hatch in it. That is the right. original. Um, compensatory storage system that was installed for Chick-fil-A. Yeah. There's a little bit of excess in that um, that we're using. This larger rectangular system that has the cross hatch in it, that is the new system that is going to be the expansion of that You're adding system. that whole part then? We're adding it, yeah. Okay. It's less than what was there before, right. but it's less because we're shrinking how much fill we're putting. Less than in what you were going to put there. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but it's still what we need to um, be compliant. All right. Kenny? I have questions. I am out. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, going to keep the rear parking lot and the side at its existing grade now. Uh, yes, this this park or this park here. Can we put the picture back up, please? Sorry. Ron, quit <laughs> Thank you. Flashing. No, I don't think is it them. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. So this parking lot here, right, is at the same grade. This uh, existing aerial, we're not, we're not touching anything over there. 
uh, this is being this area to the north of the building is being regraded slightly because obviously we have uh, a drive aisle that's connecting, so it's we're blending it back in. Mm -hmm. But overall, you're correct that this is um, four feet lower mm -hmm. than the finished floor of AAA. Okay, and so that flooded two weeks after you guys were here. Yes. Cars had to get towed out, so that's going to continue to happen there. Correct, but we okay. are. But and we are. When you were more, here, yeah. you said there was zero impact. I was upset because there was no um, positive um, to the area because that area affects a lot of houses up and downstream from it, which flooded very bad in 2005, and it proved my point two weeks after you were here. Yep. You guys were willing to correct all that to put this building in. Now you're here saying, ah, it's too much money. We don't want to correct that. We're just going to adjust the building site where we are and not worry about the lower parking lot. How do you protect the employees' vehicles when they flood in that parking lot? Because they were towed out when you guys were here two weeks later. Cars got towed out for flooding. How's that? How are you building a building there going to help solve that issue? Because okay. you're creating more parking and more employees and customers. So the uh, the building is placed above the floodplain, so that, I that know the building that's required. Is. And all the parking around the building is also above uh, the floodplain. I believe at the last meeting as part of uh, conditions of approval, we are um, required to place signs um, in the areas that are not above the floodplain to warn people of that situation. Um, I heard that um, a story similar to yours um, from town staff when we first started that people didn't know they were in floodplains water came in water left they came back from work their cars were wet they had no clue why so adding the signs obviously creates some public awareness of the problem that you are all aware of but maybe people that shop here aren't um, in terms of uh, the flooding that does happen here we are not trying to correct that problem um, that is a problem that's um, that's created by the culvert that goes under 91. Mm -hmm. um, what we're doing is we're providing compensatory storage to counteract this building. Um, we don't have the, the charge or the ability to correct the problem for the entire plaza. We're just making sure that the AAA doesn't make the problem worse. Um, and the regrading of the parking lot to the north does create more volume in this specific area to lessen that. Um, but AAA um, and the landowner can't do much to affect that problem. It's really um, a restriction on the DOT pipe downstream that's causing the problem for this landowner. Right, but when you were here, you were going to eliminate the problem for the site by elevating the site and doing the uh, storage for what you filled. Yes, so... Oh, so, yep. yes, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And now you're not doing that. Now it's just, hey, let's put the building where we can squeeze it with as little work as we have to. And that doesn't help anybody in that entire plaza upstream or downstream. So I think you're confusing what the compensatory storage is proposed. Previously, it was only for the AAA building. Mm -hmm. It's still only for the AAA building. We're just making the amount of fill we need to do to install this AAA less. So. It was going to flood before, and it's still going to flood. It's just not going to flood in any worse, if that makes sense. None of it makes sense. Why you would want to build in a floodplain, I, I don't get it. Uh, qu question. The existing plaza, uh, Bob's is on that corner. Finished floor elevations, 113.80, uh, I believe. So, and your finished floor is 115.75. So. Your building's actually a couple of feet higher than the Bob's building. So if, if there was a flood that was going to come up to an elevation of uh, uh, elevation of 114, that building would flood. Yours wouldn't, uh, correct? That's correct. We're, they, are, right. they are below the flood plaza, I believe, is 114.75. Right. So the majority of this plaza will flood. Is, is it a flood zone? Yes. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. We're required to be one foot above it. That's why we, we are at 115.75. Right. And... Um, also, the, uh, the purpose of the transitory storage was to mitigate your development impact. Correct. To offset it so that there would be no real significant impact. Correct. For, for flooding. And did you say that there's 105,000 cubic yards? Mm -hmm. 
hundred and uh, we're required from the fill for this development, 105,000 cubic yards of fill, sorry, sorry, cubic feet of fill. Okay. And you we're did say yards. Sorry. And I had a well, <laughs> quite a lot. Sorry, okay. Cubic feet, and okay. we're providing 107, so 2,000 uh, cubic feet more than what's required. Okay, that's significant. I when I when you said yards, I was uh, sorry. Uh, that's yep. an enormous amount of material. So okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Jenny. Um, if I understand you correctly, on the, in the parking uh, on the north side, you're going to make it lower. You're taking out the proposed retaining wall and making it lower. So the, uh, is it up on the screen? No, it is now. Okay. There it is. So this, this parking lot north of the building yep. um, is gonna be slightly lower than it is today. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's about at that elevation. We're raising this pad up, so this, let me see if I can zoom in here. You see ah, this, that perfect. row of landscaping, those shrubs on the north side? That, that landscape belt, that green, is a slope up to our building. Right, but my concern is if you're making the parking lot lower, won't that pitch more water towards Freshwater Brook? Nope, so the grading um, of this parking lot goes to a catch basin, kind of where my mouse is. Wait and that and that um, okay. discharges to Freshwater Brook. To when we regrade this and lower it, we're still directing everything to those catch basins, so we're matching the, the discharge points of this development. And who cleans those catch basins? Uh, it is on the uh, the landowner, um, who is Paramount Realty. They own the plaza. They have an oper uh, um, operations and maintenance schedule and manual to. Um, clean all these uh, stormwater features on the site. Also maintain landscaping, remove snow. Yes, I knew the landscaping. I was just so. concerned. Yep. Okay. Oh, um, this didn't have to go by engineering at all because it's binder staff. I think we we distributed it. I didn't receive any comment from the engineering office. Um, all the comments that I did receive, I would have put in the report. Did they receive, uh, engineering receive this uh, revision? Yep. Because I have one more question. In terms of, you know, I was reading your application, and, and part of the application, you know, I guess for the sp special use permit and site plan review application, um, there's a question is, does this application include any regulated activity in, in a floodplain? And, and it says yes. And, and it says, if yes, you need to also submit a flood hazard development permit application for the Planning and Zoning Commission. Was, was that done? That was previously approved before. All right. Yes. So, so basically, yeah, so, so basically we, we have that, that information. And, Correct. Okay. Yeah, basically, this is, this is uh, shrinking the impact, what we had previously had and approved. We're, right. we're shrinking the impacts. But, it, we're but, but, the but, but you did study, the, you know, the zoning, uh, you know, floods re regulations, and you're still compliant with the flood regulations. Absolutely. Okay. Ken. So, yeah, uh, retaining wall that you oh, show yeah, on hold sheet. Hold on, hold on. Oh, Ken. So you, the lower parking lot, you're lowering the grade lower than it is right now. Yes, uh, is the screen on? Nope. nope. <laughs> now it is. This parking lot to the north here, that is that is slightly lower than it is today. Okay. Which creates more volume in that, that area. And more susceptible to flooding. Uh, it, it holds more water, so it doesn't creep over a greater area in the parking lot. So it's, the groundwater is how, how much lower than the grade, existing grade right now? Existing um, ground uh, water, probably a few a few feet, at most. Right. And so you're going to lower that, and right now that parking lot floods frequently, mm -hmm. and by lowering it, it's going to flood a lot more frequently. Well, the, instead of the water being under the ground, it's going to be on top of the parking lot now. We are skimming off the parking lot incrementally. We're not obviously intercepting groundwater. I, I understand uh, you're not going to go below groundwater. There. There's yep. utilities there as well, so. We're not trying to lessen the cover over existing utilities. Um, it's really just a regrade to match uh, this dry vial that blends back down because that's at a higher elevation. Um, so this parking lot does flood. It will continue to flood, but we're creating a, a little bit more of a bathtub in this area, for lack of a better term. So 
if the flooding before was filling up a large percentage of this parking lot, it would fill up less, but it would be deeper in this in this spot. And the storage that you had before would help mitigate some of that problem. And now you're trying to do the storage when you need it on top of the parking lot instead of in no. your... No, we, we are getting storage out of this parking lot area, Skim. On your and, original and, plan, was that parking lot lowered? Yes. Lower, and it was it was approved lower to where you're putting it now. Uh, no, we no. are we were they're both they're both lowered. We're just lowering less of the parking lot now. Before we were repaving this entire lot. Now we're just repaving the northern section. Mm -hmm. But both both were being lowered, and we both and both had a compensatory storage system next to Chick Fil A. So you got an area that floods now, and we're going to put it lower and put yeah, cars more on water it. In there. I'm all set. Okay, John. Yeah, I have a question on the detail sheet, uh, DN5. Uh, you're showing the retaining wall. I, I assume that was the wall that you referred to that you're now eliminating, so that detail is no longer required. And the ornamental fence on top of it, so there's... Uh, right, that, that, was, that is what's being eliminated from, from that section. Okay, and uh, is there no landscaping required um or restoration where you're doing the uh, compensatory storage area i didn't see any landscape details on that area yeah the compensatory storage uh, is your screen working yes yeah the compensatory storage area that is adjacent to the chick-fil-a system is entirely within the the parking lot um, so it's going to be saw cut and excavation and then repave over the top of It'll it. It'll be strictly pavement uh, right. removal replacement. Because there's a, uh, if you've driven down Hazard Ave recently, there's some mature trees on uh, that buffer to the road, and we didn't want to touch that. You're going to be budding that, but you won't be disturbing Yeah, the... it'll be in the parking lot, not in the landscaped okay. area. Very good. Thank you. Rich is still looking at his maps. I don't yeah, know if we... Yeah. Huh? I'm just looking at the landscaping. All right. Well, I don't know if you're all finished I'm yet. All you all, all set? Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve um, draft resolution for site plan review 1774 dated April 11, 2019 as prepared by the planning department with the conditions listed. And I think that there's, you know, I guess from 9 to 15 are specific site conditions. And, and like you said, I, I didn't see anything that, that indicated that there was that railing and, and, you know, barrier at the top of the slope. So I'd, I'd like to sort of add that as make sure that that does get on, on our condition. So if, as, it's, as, if it's not there, we can definitely. Yeah, like you said, I, I looked and, and I didn't see anything that would indicate it was there. So. We can add a timber guide rail. Okay, yes. so that it would be a, there would be a timber guide rail at the top of that slope so that it would prevent people from going down the slope. So that would just be one additional condition. Any seconds? Oh, I second it. I'm sorry. Okay. Motion is made and seconded. Discussion. Uh, I just have a concern that our engineering department had no comments. I understand that it's not. We're not trying to hold you up. But I always feel better when I get our engineering comments saying it's no problem, especially because that site is a little, you know, uh, sensitive to some people, so and so cool. uh, it already was approved. So now it's being tweaked, and I just don't feel comfortable um, voting on it in the positive if I don't have anything from our engineering department. That's just my thoughts. Okay. Because I, I can amend my motion to include the fact that we include any uh, comments as prepared by the engineering department so that we, we do get that comment. Or you, you'd rather hear it ahead no, of time? No, the thing is, once it's approved, we don't have the authority or the ability to the make them change would, it. Though, I believe. What if Not you, that you wouldn't change it. I'm just if, saying we can't make you change it once we approve it. What if you made a motion to withdraw your motion and we make a motion to 
postpone to the next meeting till we get those comments because this is a big change. I've tried before here. You people have wanted to do it. Again, it's I could do that. If, if, if that would make everybody feel a little more comfortable, I, I could withdraw my motion I, to I approve. Said, but interject for a second. I know at the previous application, I believe you did have a condition of engineering comments being addressed and, um, you know, satisfactory to the engineer prior to, um, you know, it being recorded and being moved forward and before we go to a building permit application. But uh, this is a, you know, a, it is, it is a tweak, but it is a reduction yeah. from what we were doing before. Right. Same, you know, we're not doing anything Got completely it. different. I know these guys are. Um, but John, quite... our engineering department did have comments, and they said that they had no concerns. Right. And that's why we moved forward, saying anything in the future would be addressed. Right. But we don't have anything from our engineering department saying this is so minor we don't have a problem with it. Right. And because it's being lowered a bit. I just would feel better. And I, I'm only one, so I'm not saying for the rest of the group to um, take my lead. I'm just saying that I don't feel comfortable. Well, you know, I have an agreement with us. Yeah, I mean, whatever whatever John Cabibbo, um, you know, obviously needs uh, for proof again, or if he wants a tweak, we obviously we'll, we'll have to do that. Um, you know, so I know AAA is, is antsy. I know they actually have a building permit application already submitted to town. They, you know, they're looking to move forward um, and keep on their your schedule so well that wouldn't hold you up that would just hold up the proposed changes um, I believe it would slow them down a little well, bit it's a whole change in a site plan right. that they'd have to submit it's besides the point I mean we don't have anything from our town staff about these changes That's she's right Charlie you wouldn't you would never go forward with no, I, said it. That's I, so. I, I like my paperwork before I, I'm sorry I did make a motion to withdraw my motion and second. Oh, the other, the seconder has to. Uh, second, uh, withdraw. Okay. <laughs> so we have nothing on the table right now then. So I make a motion that we uh, postpone this until the next meeting or we get the town engineers um, report about the changes to this. Well, you'd be to the next meeting. You can't uh, right. do it by phone or any other way. Right. Next meeting or t what, if we don't have them by next meeting, then it would be the meeting after it. So I would hope we have them yeah. by next meeting. It would be nice if, uh, I understand how staff is very busy, but it would be nice if before it comes before us, we had all the comments so we wouldn't be holding anybody up. Again, not not staff's fault. You have no control over engineering or any of the other departments. Good, but exactly. I, I just don't I want us to before. be the bad guys and hold hold businesses up. Um, I just like to do my. Well, we didn't hold them up. No, they I understand. Approved. They were all set. I, I understand. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. maybe this would be an. Uh, I don't want to say a lesson, but you know, maybe John, maybe the engineering department could be a little more forthcoming. Either yes, we have comments and we'll get back to you, or no, we don't have any comments. They're great. So, just if if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, you may. Uh, <laughs> thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so, um, they are actually having less impact with this proposal. Um, I understand you wanting uh, the town engineer to review it. However, when they modify the plans before the, for the building permit, the engineer has to sign off on it. So he will be looking at it at that time as well. So I don't know if that makes things. But again, we don't have that information. Mm -hmm. I feel very uncomfortable going forward with this okay. until we get it. And I mean, right. this is not the first time that we've tabled something because we don't have the information Understood. so you know I can I hear Especially what you're saying and I know that they have to sign off but it's their responsibility to get that information to us before the meeting so and we our... shouldn't feel pressured into doing something and the applicant should not feel uncomfortable and that's what's happening here yeah. but also it's the applicants responsibility to make sure that we have everything that he needs too if he hasn't if he hadn't gotten a copy he could have called the engineering say where is it I agree but on that. no it's I'm saying this is, this is the way yeah. it's gone before and that's we need this information why I say 
having it on the table one night and you don't have chance or not having it is even well, worse. And, and I think Jenny was referring to the fact that we'd like to have it before the night of the meeting to go over it. Yeah. Because this last minute stuff, especially something like this. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> but, you know, if it was meant to be, we approve and then they look at everything, the police department, all of it, it would be just subject to their approval. And that's not the way it's written. So, yeah. I. All right. There's no motion on the floor, though. No. Yeah, there is. There, there is. is. You made a motion to it. Oh, I'm sorry. It was seconded? seconded. I don't know if there was. Yeah, I second his motion who, who, to table it to yeah, right. next meeting. Until or until oh, we got the engine. You second or the tens, we, Kenny's. Yes, or until we got the engineers. Okay. Information. Okay, the motion is then that it's tabled till the next meeting uh, because of the engineers' report is lacking. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. So. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I know we have some items before you to still go over, but um, we only have one member of the audience here, and she is here for item 10B. I was wondering if you might consider oh, taking that out of, out of order. 10B. All right. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we um, take our agenda out of order to put 10B in front of the referrals, the 824 referrals under so, business oh, yeah, 9. Okay. Second. Thank you. It's also would be ahead of uh, 10A. Right. Yeah. Well, we just did 10A. Oh, well, you got it. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. I appreciate right that. Go on right up. And, Name here, and, and here comes and Val address. Farrow, always out of order. <laughs> Never out of order. <laughs> Does it stay in or do I have to keep pressing? It'll there. stay there as long as it stays red. It's red. Code red for Val. Uh. Let me get situated. That's red for be careful of what you say. I know. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. I know it's a long night for everyone. Um, Valerie Farrow, Good Earth Advisors, um, playing a different role this evening. Um, I am here on behalf of a prospective. Um, did, I, did I hear your name and address? Valerie Farrell, Good Earth Advisors, Avon, Connecticut. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm here tonight just really informally just to have a beginning discussion, um, something that Lori and I discussed last week. I am um, here on behalf of a prospective developer operator of senior living facilities and um, was approached after they had done an initial market study within Connecticut and started looking in Enfield and started looking at a number of properties. And um, they have in mind um, bringing a independent living, assisted living, memory care, and also senior housing, you know, age-restricted, um, there's a particular area they're looking at. It's zoned industrial. Um, had some discussions with them about what they want to do and how they want to do it. Um, sorting through the regulations, I started scratching my head. I've done a fair number of healthcare facilities, and um, there didn't seem to be anything to fit. And I thought it was interesting because, as you know, we are getting older. <laughs> <laughs> and there seemed to be, based on their initial market study, there was a demand here. Not to say that we're getting old, but I think that's what they were telling us. Um, so I went through a number of the definitions. I went through all the regulations, and each one had something that it brought to the table, the development table, but it didn't exactly hit. Well, 
well, I can tell you a reason for that. <laughs> so one of the things I realized in doing some cross-referencing with some new facilities that have just, that are either being constructed now or have just been recently constructed, or towns that are benefiting, extremely benefiting from the tax base when these facilities come in, um, you know, they have more, either more flexible uh, uh, types of zones or they have more encompassing zones. So I went in and Lori and I discussed this last week. We spent a fair amount of time actually, out of the kindness of her heart, going through a number of regs and also the existing regs. And um, in your packet, you know, I think there was a couple things that I sent her. One, of course, just to show that yes, we're all getting old. Yeah, there we, go. we knew that, right? <laughs> Um, another is just looking at the current definitions of Enfield zoning regs. And it's funny because your definitions have everything, but yet they're not fully embodied in your regulations. And in some cases, there's a, a, a mix up of between, you know, is it congregate, is it elderly, is it assisted, is it senior? I mean, it's just all over the place. and. It's really not you folks, it's just the market and what's been happening the last few years. And so a number of communities have been um, trying to make things broader so that there's enough uh, um, flexibility in a zone. For like right now, you only allow um, this type of facility in residential. And it's also gotta be 30 acres. So we're thinking, wow, if I'm in a neighborhood, someone buys a hunk of land or maybe even tears down some homes and plops down one of these facilities, that could happen. That really could happen. I don't think it's intentional, but that could happen. Um, and I think that's why some of the newer regulations that are coming through in other communities, they have certain restrictions on you know, size, maybe 15 or greater. Um, they have provisions of open space, um, but the uses themselves is based on certain density and um, uses and more of the how it functions together. Um, one of the things that this facility that this particular operator is interested in, what it's not, is what's called the CCRC, which is a Continuing Care Retirement Community. And that interesting goes from assisted living, not really independent, but assisted living, where you have skills of uh, activities of daily living, which you, you need assistance with, and some of your insurance covers that, all the way to a skilled nursing facility. That's not this facility. That's not what they're talking about. Um, what it's more similar to is a what I would call senior care, senior housing, where uh, a couple would have the ability to live independently through an independent unit, or perhaps even in some senior housing, age restricted because they have absolutely no health issues. These types of facilities are being built because a spouse grows sick, has a stroke, something happens. What do you do? You try to keep them at home. If you can't, you have to go find a facility. A lot of times, one goes in the assisted living, the other stays in the home. There's extreme financial demand for that, and you're separating the couple. So there's all this stuff swirling around, and frankly, our regulations aren't keeping up fast enough because there's just such demand. So that's probably enough background for me. You want to chime in on what, what else we found? and Yeah, so, um, you know, I think we were both a little surprised that these were specifically and only allowed in residential Resident. zones because realistically... You know how archaic our regulations are. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I've been so, yelling about that for ages. Right. So, so, so what we... So, you know, we, we looked at that, the fact that it's only allowed in residential. We also looked at the fact that um, I think that a lot of the densities are 
I mean, it, it, they couldn't possibly work in the real world as far as marketing. Um, you know, the densities right now are for like an assisted living is um, 10 per acre. And I think we were looking that we probably needed about 16 right. or 20. Right. Right. So in order for, for it to make it profitable. Right. Um, so um, one other thing, Lori, we forgot is that the senior welcome. housing zone only allows condos. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, more so, even more so, with the financial drain of, of health care and what Medicare doesn't cover, which is so tragic, is that you know a lot of folks are looking, they, they have to sell their home for asset. <clears throat> Plain, simple, that's what it is. You can deny it, but it's all happening. They have to sell their home for an asset, and they look for an apartment with a... Um, maybe potentially ailing person if they were in an apartment dwelling senior housing in an area like this or nearby you know within this complex they would be able to they've already sold their home they might have more assets but not only could they live in an apartment and not have the drain of a maintenance of a home or, or buy a condo um, but then the ailing partner could go into that other facility and that person could stay in the apartment um, so you know, that's just another raw reality of aging that it, it, it's, it's, it's happening. Um, so that's the other thing we found. When we started going through it, we are looking at all the language, and then Lori said, wait a minute, this is exclusively condo. That's all that's allowed. So, um, so really the crux of this is we would like to get your feel for whether or not you would be amenable to you know, considering some new regulations that kind of fit more of the market and the needs of the community. Um, you know, I, I, I think that if you go to most communities, these are not in residential zones. They're more in, in commercial and industrial. And I, I think that will open the, the door to um, more possible development of this nature. And, and also we wanted to do well, the continuing care the or the continuum of, the of care. Mm -hmm. the closing of the nursing home in town and it really leaves nothing here in Enfield. And our regulations sure need upgrading to this type. I mean, she's right. Well, she's in the business. It's changed so much. My, my sister was just in, uh, I forget the name of it, but there's so many levels of, of care. That right, I, right. We're, we're remiss in, in not mm -hmm. having something of this type, mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. There is a facility in Long Meadow right over the line mm -hmm. that is basically independent living, assisted living, mm -hmm. to nursing to skilled nursing CCRC mm -hmm. and um, it just goes so that if you live in you buy the mm -hmm. condo it's a condo mm -hmm. it's actually an apartment you spend the money mm -hmm. and um, so you're living there but your money is actually being applied towards your other levels too so it's not right. like you just bought this condo it's the money is being used to help you facilitate into the next level of as care you need, as you need it yeah. and then go into your skilled nursing. So it does work. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think they're great ideas. I know a lot of elderly people selling their homes. Um, a lot of them are going into the apartments. They have upscale restaurants in there, mm -hmm. and there is steps, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it keeps the unit together. Mm -hmm. You've been with your wife for mm -hmm. 40 years. Mm -hmm. How do you? And it, in your stuck. community, too. In your community. Yeah, right. It's a community is what I call it. I don't even call it an assisted living or anything. Right. right. My first question would be is how do you keep the age-restricted designation without the state putting people disabled in that unit, because I know we have that in elderly housing, where you could end up living next to somebody who's, you know, got a drug problem or an alcohol problem, because... Right. Like the last time I was here, I heard that. <laughs> um, I, I believe, if you look at your regs, there is, there is, there are elderly units under section something, something, something at the state. 
So this, this isn't that section of elderly housing. Mm -hmm. Now, how you distinguish that under fair housing, I don't know. But I also know that these facilities, I mean, you saw the pictures I provided you. Um, you know, th these are upscale. Absolutely. They're whatever, they're policed. Um, you know, all the issues you normally have, it just, it, frankly, I have never seen it. And I've worked in four states doing these. I mean, it's just um, they keep them pristine because, you know, it's not just the couple or, or the, 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 the client. It's the family that you're taking care of. Mm -hmm. One little piece of trash in the front and you're done. So that's the beauty of these. Mm -hmm. And most communities welcome these because... They want to keep their folks in town where they have been worshiping, where they've been socializing and playing cards. And if you take those folks out of your community, you fracture that community. At the same time, there's an economic development benefit. I mean, these, uh, th these, these facilities, just quickly, I went through, I just picked five or six. They ranged from $17 million to $67 million. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of taxes. There's no, I support them yeah. all the way. Yeah. And, and I think. But that's a good question, but I, and I think that is the answer, well, like but you it's said, a good, yeah. One bad thing oh, it, could it's, take it's, the whole it's, place yeah. down, and we're having that problem with the elderly housing. Yes. Now, I know this is separate. No, this is separate. Yeah. It's clearly separate. And, and you know, I mean, full time, 24 7, people picking up stuff. It's just, it's scrubbed. I mean, the, yeah. just the way it is. But. And so, my next question would be to Lori is. I agree with you, but why do we even have to designate a zone for this? I mean, this would fit in residential. I mean, these places are so upscale. As long as they met, you know, the uh, elderly housing that she's discussing, you know, like a private community, a gated community, so to say, I don't know why we would have to limit it to a commercial or industrial business or residential. I think it should be open. Right. Well, it's only allowed in residential. Be not, not, right. The, I know. The, yeah, really, right. really, the question. The, I, what I'm sure we're talking about is, is amending the zoning regulations. You're not going to fit this into present day regulations. Well, well right. I, I think probably, we did something like this on South Road. Well, yes. Right? Yeah. So, you know, this is something different that would fit on that particular site. And she just read the regulation, 30 acres or more, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, uh, I believe Karen LaPlante came here with a bunch of different sites. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, I just, something like this, I don't see why we would even have to put a zone on it if it meets. It's an underlying right. zone. Right. You, you don't need to put a zone right. on it. But right. the, the point is, is that right now it can't go anywhere but residential. Right. Yeah. So and I it's 30 acres, too. on the yeah. amendment oh, yeah. to the regulation and at the same time. And I don't think we should wait because I don't want to miss an opportunity like this. At the same time, also come up with the fee and Lewis sidewalks and get that on the books immediately also. Oh, yeah. I know. Because That's true. A quick fix. Right. Yeah. Yes, that's right. what I'm saying. Right. Quick fix. Right. We had, and I don't know how many years ago, I was just checking with Charlie, we had an application for a place, but it ended up the, the rooms were very small. Like they were more like cells, Oof. and well, they, they were denied. I'd like uh, to see him take a couple size. of the old schools over and make That's apartments out of them and there then build go. separate facilities off of that. Well, this, you know, this particular uh, operator is looking in an industrial area and is not, you know, averse to, you know, potentially adaptive reuse of an industrial building. Um, you know, they, they like to do something like that. Schools are hard um, just because they're one floor. Um, but well, the one where I'm <laughs> no. Right, that's right. what I, I would think it'd make it more attractive being on one floor. Yeah, yeah. But you know the business better yeah. than I do, so I'm not going to challenge it. But. Well. <laughs> so there is yes, somebody interested now? Yes, I've been approached by a, a particular owner-operator. Um, Here in Enfield. Oh, no. No. Um, no. They're, looking in they're looking in Enfield. Right. They that's, did a mar that's why I'm saying Yes, speed. they've done an initial market study, Yeah. and they have targeted Enfield. Okay. Um, I, 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 we're talking hypothetical, but hypothetically, 
what would a development like this take up in acreage? I don't think it needs 30 or would want to be limited by 30 acres, but I would say 20, 20, 25. But you can put it in business, but you can't put it in industrial. You're right. right. <laughs> There's some that you can put in business. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. But only certain things. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Again, I would support this going forward, and, and, and I agree with, with Kenny, I, I misinterpreted your thing, where, where it doesn't necessarily need any kind of zone. It basically, we can allow it in any zone that, that it is, would be available, and then we would make a decision as to whether it would be in, in you know, meets the intent of our conservation and development, you know, so Lori, plan. What do you so want? I uh, think that, you know. I, I only hear good things. Yeah. yeah, that's what we were looking for. We just wanted to make well, sure yeah, that you so would be amenable to the to conversation. Do? What do you need to do? Work with Val, and we'll come up with some regulations for you to review. Including the sidewalks. I imagine Including you might even have, of sidewalks. You wouldn't already have them written, would you? <laughs> Pardon? No. You wouldn't already have them written, would you? I'm no. Her till next <laughs> no, but I think we'll be working on that. Right. You're giving her to the next meeting? Come on. <laughs> All right. I think Val would love it if we had them for the next meeting. <laughs> It would make this client quite happy because I think they would probably, because you know, you know their perspective, and they're like, "Well, go talk to them. Let, you know, let us know how what they." I'm like, "Okay." Realistically, Lori, what would the turnaround be for you guys to put something together? And what well, we need to do the regs to make it go. Right. You know. Well, f first we have to write them, and there is the um, you know, obviously. Then you've got to review Statutory. them, and then we have to do send them to Krog, Krog. for the 30-day mm -hmm. review. Mm -hmm. So. Probably two months, maybe. Could we? Uh, uh, if we could make it faster, we, we can will. make it faster. But well, we yeah. could. If if you need us, we could. Uh, I'd be willing to come out on absolutely a special, special meeting. Yeah, okay. just call a special okay. meeting. Just don't do it on a Thursday night. The special meeting. Okay. <laughs> Not over Easter though. Oh. No. no I, Wednesday nights good. Thursday nights. Okay. Well, I I'm out of town yeah, next yeah. week, regardless. So. So I don't think it's going to happen next week unless, unless no, but you I'll want start. to. No, but I'll start. If it will speed things up, we'll call a special meeting. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. That's that, awesome. That would be Thursday night. enormously helpful. Lori will work as You're quickly as too. she oh, yeah. needs mm -hmm. to, but I'm sure there's other things, so right. we need right. to do it tomorrow. right. Right. So not tomorrow. <laughs> and just to share with you, just looking at my matrix, no, you. at least six of the towns I looked at, they all allow it and you go through the underlying zone. So they don't specify any zones. It just says wherever you want to go, here it is. And if it's residential, there's obviously more restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And in industrial and commercial, there's less. And the density is much higher in, industri in industrial and commercial. Um, and then I'll say one more thing and shut up. My favorite terminology that I found after looking at, oh, I think about 16 of these, Old Saybrook has a residential life care zone. Actually, it's not a zone. It's a district, and it's an overlay, if, wherever it is. I like that. It seemed to, what it, was you that know, again? Resi residential life care. Good. I was like, you know, it kept sort of the elderly out of it and the senior out of it. <laughs> but, you know, it just seemed to be homier to me. But we'll work on some. Okay. Yeah, but I don't want to limit where we can go in Enfield either because Enfield's Built pretty oh, much absolutely. all over, so absolutely. We'll, we'll have propose to make the it whole for any town. zone with right. restrictions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Kenny, uh, my uncle lives in a facility like this in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and actually, he's within walking distance to Wegmans, and it's great. I, I, I mean, know, this is like the best thing. Since I know several bread. people. They were very nervous about selling their houses, and oh, yeah. they went into apartments. Absolutely, you know, this is they like, were more homebodies when they had their house. Now they're yeah. socializing with people, and mm -hmm. it's just this yeah. facility. Yeah. He's living in a, a full library, a theater, a restaurant. So yeah. So have the plans to us next meeting, <laughs> and we'll approve them subject to Krog approving <laughs> the change. Yeah. As Thank you so much. I really here. appreciate this. <laughs> this is a big deal, I know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you All right, much. take care. Thank you, Val.
Okay, let's reverse back to the agenda. Oh. The agenda, you're right. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, twenty four referral. Okay. Boy, <clears throat> this is a great one, too. Uh, you want to present this uh, from your desk over there? One of you young sure. Um, so we have been working since prior to Nelson, Tereso, and my joining Enfield. They've been working on this um, property at uh, 98 Prospect Street. It's a brownfield. Um, we've been working on getting a brownfield money and grants to have it cleaned up or assessed and cleaned up and we are at the point now that uh, Kelly Fredette would like to purchase it from us and develop it as part of their um, overall site uh, of your know, business site that was a so um, there's really I, I can't imagine anybody else that would really want it it fits into their overall um, sure does. campus and so we're just looking for your blessing for us to sell it and move forward so we could get... I'm sure uh, the people across the street will be happy to have that out of there, too. Right. So, and there's another, there'll be another little piece that hasn't been done, so we'll probably work on that in the future. But, you know, this way, you know, it helps to uh, retain and expand businesses. Is it cleaned up? that we're, we're working on that so that we're working so they need a, we need to get a memorandum of understanding for the purchase and sale agreement so so would but, Kelly forget clean it up if we gave you know if we so the, the it, we it, we will be grant. working with brownfield. in conjunction with them but um, we've got the brownfield grant already for the for the phase one and phase two and then there'll be the remediation thank you so okay who wants to do the honors Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to forward a favorable recommendation to the Town Council for the conveyance of a 0.81 acre town owned property located at 98 Prospect Street to the neighboring property owner, Kelly Fredette Lumber, Inc., Map 21, Lot 20, I1 Zone. Second. second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Who, who really second is that. All in favor? Yes, need to do all the whereases on this resolution? No, 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 just, no. that's, that's never, the town council's just resolution. Uh, just for your reading pleasure. Uh, let's see, where are we? 25 Hazard Avenue. Oh, 25 Hazard Avenue. Okay. Proposed uh, facade changes. So for this one, um, I believe uh, you guys had a, uh, administratively or authorized administrative approval for um, the splitting of the Bob store into two separate spaces. Um, they actually want to make uh, facade changes to do that, um, which I guess we were not able to really present to you guys at that time because um, this has just come about now. But they need to create two different peaks in that um, uh, section of the plaza. On, it's yep. Um, so, uh, they need to create two separate peaks, and so, um, for, just for home sense, they have come to us with a proposal for what they want their peak and their signage to look like. So, if you look at the first, um, sheet that we put in your packet, you see kind of what a standard home sense storefront looks like. Right. Um, with the this white, peak. uh, sort of, uh, background, it looks like tiles almost. Um, and the green sign in front. So they want to sort of do that, but um, keep the peak look, um, which is on, I think, the second page. You can see a rendering of what it would look like. It's different than the rest of the peaks in that shopping center, which have um, sort of a decorative exactly uh, triangle at the top. Yeah, this is what they I like the peak. It matches. It doesn't, oh, you know, everybody here. else has the peaks, and the first page was like a square. I like the peak. Yeah. Right. So what we wanted a little guidance on was you guys had approved Aldi's at the other end of the plaza um, to have that silver in the back not going all the way up into the peak. The other peaks all have crown molding in them. Um, and uh, this proposal is to put the white background from the bottom all the way up and then put the sign on top. 
um, I guess we were just looking for guidance on uh, what you guys were looking for, whether you wanted it to be uniform with the crown molding on each peak and keeping the, um, the white lower than the triangle at the top, or if you didn't mind seeing it go all the way up into the peak. Isn't, doesn't PetSmart, isn't PetSmart in that plaza? Petco. Petco. Petco, yes. Do they have a peak? Yep. Okay, so, but what color is their peak? But Red? No, it's the same color like as the that. building, but they also don't have the side pillars on the side of each peak. Okay. Uh, so they don't, they're not uniform with the rest of the plaza anyways. Mm -hmm. Five below, everything but the peak is all blued out. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, what HomeSense or the developers trying to do here mm -hmm. really isn't going to throw everything out of no. kilter on that plaza, no. and nope. it just makes it a little nope. more distinctive. That's Carol. why I said so I like the peak. We're familiar with it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, white is nice and fresh and clean, yep. and mm -hmm. I don't have, I personally don't have a problem with that, but I do would like to see the peak. No, they want it. They got the peak on it. Mm. Okay. All right. And you guys are okay with the white going all the way up to the sure. top of the peak, yeah. mm -hmm. even though that's different no. than the rest of, okay. Yeah. You know, the, the only thing that I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, the only thing that I'm looking at is that all the other signage is, is actually doesn't extend into the gable. And there's a distinction between the gable is sort of a defined element and, and basically the sign should not go into that defined element. And I think that all of a sudden if we extend <clears throat> that uniform, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, gradation in, in terms of texture and everything as a uniform thing, I think that the peak is going to get lost. And, and I think that, and again, I'm not an architect, but, you know, possibly, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing it white, but not necessarily, you know, I think that, you know, just having a, a contrast in the texture or something, it could still be white and still sort of present, you know, the, the, the facade that they're trying to achieve, but not necessarily give a, a uniform texture because, you know, th just to have a little distinction and a little variation creates interest and, and you know, consistency in, in the plaza yeah. by allowing that one color and one texture and, and one reflection, you know, to it, extend all the way to the peak. Yeah. Seems to me that it's going to be too much of a... It of a could have the uh, line across it, like the peak to its correct. left. Right. The like the Aldi, if you look at the Aldi sign, mm -hmm. you know, basically, you know, they have their white thing and they have sort of a, a cream color or you know, a beige color. And, and like I said, I wouldn't mind if that was white. But but not necessarily the same thing all the way up because all you know all of a sudden it loses definition as to what it you know what what you're trying to do, and and I think it probably would accentuate their sign, you know I might be wrong but you know I think that you know the signs actually stick out more when there's a, a little bit of relief or a little bit of shade and, and a little bit of well, you know I, I guess shadow that that's created by that panel system. Isn't it going to be green? Isn't the sign itself going to be green? Yeah. Right. Yes. So that would be the uh, well. They can contrast. make the they can make the whole bottom green, you know. For all I care, but, yeah. but I think that having that that same panel green system. On the white to bring the sign yeah. Out. Right. Right. But right. But that's but, why I said if you just extend across the peak that line, correct. like the other one has, correct. Correct. you could have your white with your green and everybody right. be happy. And do you want to see the molding? Over it, or well, I don't. I don't think that the, the molding isn't consistent everywhere else. So basically, they have removed the molding and the other signs, but they haven't re removed the, dis the distinction that the gable is, is is an entirely different element and an entirely different kind of configuration than the lower part, or the you know the flat part below the rake. Yeah. All these doesn't have a molding, and they still have a definition. Correct. Right. right. Yep. Right, and and at that, I think that's what it needs. It needs that. It could be that. white, so but it does. It needs some kind of a here. distinction yes. to the fact that the gable is no, different than the sign. Okay. But it, what, what he's saying is, they've got two different colors. That's, yeah. And that's really well, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They stop here. All right. He, he yeah, I have to agree with Rich. Yeah. Looking at these signs, that. Frankly, I don't see anything offensive about that. I don't either. mind the way all these looks. But I don't think I'd want just no distinction between the where the, the, the gate, yeah. Like this. But it doesn't have to have the uh, molding. 
because but so we'll the shading and color right. and that's yeah. what the shading saying. of color is is yeah. there something or, or even texture and, and texture also de defines you know yeah. different it's, levels so that it could be just a texture color but it could be the same color it's the same company that owns Marshalls and TJ Maxx, I think, could be wrong. It is. It and, says, uh, and if you look at Marshalls, I, I never noticed that before, but it's very nice. It's got the little blue things that designate it, and it's got blue letters. I don't mean that they should have blue and green. I'm just saying that's, that's a nice way to do it. Okay. Hmm. You want now. So is that the consensus? Because mm -hmm. me personally, they're a f national franchise. Mm -hmm. and for us to sit here and tell them how they can make their sign is well, absurd. They're not altering the building. They're keeping the peak. And the white is so the green stands out. Right. Everything will but still be white. You know, don't get me wrong. Everything's still going to be white there. It's just that it will be a different texture. In terms of it, you know, because right now they're, if you look at it, they're extending the panel. It's where, right. you know, so so the the actual gable sort of doesn't it disappears. And 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 the thing is, they'll always have the the green and white sign mm -hmm. against a white background. Right. But but the white background won't be totally uniform. It it'll be it'll have a little bit of Ayers. distinction in it so that so they can go white all the way right. up. Yeah, they can go white all the way up. But but like the, do the flat veneer panels here and right. then stucco white up. Correct. Up. Correct. Okay. So everything's still white, okay. you know. So right. but but you know what I'm yep. saying? So yep. it just throws a little bit of shadow so some little bit of a difference so that it it doesn't look so stark. Right. And actually, that would work right off the top of the sign, pretty much Correct. from there up. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're fine. Sounds like a plan. Yep. That's it. I thought you wanted it. No, 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 no. I got you now. So okay. the. What do you, uh, Jen? What do you want? Uh, a vote of some kind, or is what? If you guys want to make a motion to. Um, I guess it's a I, consensus. Is a, a consensus. consensus uh, yeah. To, okay, to go along with the proposal that uh, was made by Richard. Rich. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then follow what Rich had said. Whatever Rich said. Whatever Rich said. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Whatever okay. Rich said. <laughs> what he said. What he said. <laughs> okay. Uh, where now did we get messed up? No. Discussion oh, only encompasses co any correspondence. Uh -uh. Nothing. Oh yes, we do. We had uh, two of our commissioners that are present went on a trip, <laughs> and uh, I heard it was quite interesting. And I was wondering adventure. if uh, one of them would give us a. Uh, I'm just going to fill us in. Talk about it. Oh, okay. Well, on March 28th, the reason. Ginny and I weren't here at the uh, meeting was we went to the Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning um, Agencies annual conference and um, where people get their awards for 12 years or longer on a land use board mm -hmm. and apparently we got two Charlies that are going to be in a Nick coming up don't, you've got it's twenty over, something years. Yeah, well, it's twelve plus, and so you know everybody. Oh, there's they got so a twenty-year one too. That would be Nick. Yeah, so <laughs> they're they'll be getting their awards next year, but they they, they should go. Be, but gonna, okay. Um, <laughs> but it was interesting because they had a speaker from the Northeastern Connecticut Council of Governments, a John Filchek, Filchek. I'm probably saying his name wrong. And um, he was talking about making the, there's going to be an amendment to uh, Section 8-3 where the state is going to appoint um, zoning enforcement officers to towns. That the towns won't, yeah, <laughs> give me that look. That's what they want to do. And um, he also went on to talk about regionalizing 
the uh, some of our public services, and he was uh, equating the state of Connecticut's population to the population in Austin, Texas, and saying that, well, you know, in Austin, Texas, they have the same amount of people as we have in the whole state of Connecticut. And in Connecticut, we have over 500 fire departments. Mm -hmm. Austin, Texas only has five. We should think about regionalizing that. Care for and, <laughs> and then he talked about the 911 centers. Connecticut has 40 to 50 911 centers. Austin only has one. Mm -hmm. I, the room basically exploded. It was, um, it was almost a <laughs> insurrection. An insurrection, as Ginny calls it. Um, because people were very concerned that they would be losing some of their public services and because the state is looking to regionalize this, not only the fire departments, the 911s, but police departments and things like that. And so um, people would be losing jobs if they went to that. But it's on the table and it's being discussed. It's something that our new governor is looking into. So mm -hmm. it was interesting. Mm -hmm. I told Ginny, okay, we need to leave. <laughs> it was getting uh, pretty Hostile. loud. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty rare for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's from Texas. Very he forgot he's in Connecticut. I was going now to he's from Connecticut. And to keep my to yeah, it was kind of uh, whoa. But he is Connecticut. He is from Connecticut, yep. and the governor, our um, Lamont, actually uh, tapped him to to do the research and put this together. Mm -hmm. So it should be interesting to watch it unfold. Yeah, so I mean the state is going to appoint the zoning enforcement officers. That was one thing, but then the rest of it just kind of State's putting tolls in now just to pay for what they got and they're going to try to fund. Did, did they say that they'd be trained zoning enforcement officers? Well, they officers? said that, yes, because the state would do a better job. How's that than who? out so far? Uh, pardon? <laughs> that the state will do a better job than Casio? Yeah that the state would train these people and do a better job and so that they'd be well trained when they were appointed. Okay. Okay. That I didn't make that Thanks. one up. I got a witness. <laughs> oh, sure. I agree with the regionalization on a lot of things. Yeah. But, you know, let the town run the town. You know, if yeah. East Windsor chooses to join us, mm -hmm. that's their choice. Or okay. regionalization wouldn't it be great if three towns needed uh, fire trucks and they went out and they found the best bid for all three mm -hmm. towns mm -hmm. and saved money that way. There's ways to save money, as you said, mm -hmm. but um, it's a little scary to lose your 911 and I know believe, that five town, towns over is the 911 call. I think there was an article in the JI because they've read about this in the fire departments that we have better coverage and better equipment than the Hartford does. Actually, oh, we absolutely. Have more we have more equipment, yeah. 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 So they, I, part of it looks like a little bit of jealousy. Well, that's advantage, disadvantage of having five separate fire districts. I got to have better than you, but the end result is we have one heck of a fire system Take well, it from do. me. They, they came and rescued other. me six weeks ago. Yeah, so I, I mean, those guys are right there and Oh, yeah. When you dial 911, two or three minutes. They even go up in mass and help them out, too. Yeah, EMS, fire, police, yep. this town is, yep. people may say we have too much, but you know what? When you need them, yeah, they're they right are. there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And time's important in instances like that. When two or three minutes so feel like two or three hours. They see what we have so. and they, they want it, that's all. Yeah. Want to leave you waiting you didn't mind, hour, You wouldn't mind laying in that car for an hour. I don't remember how long I waited, yeah. but... Commissioner's correspondence? Right none. Hmm? None? 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 Commissioner? You, no, no, nothing? Okay, Director of Planning. Well, you've got um. your work to do anyway now. 
<laughs> Kenny says he wants to all by next week. Yeah, I don't have much of a report at this okay. point. Um, I, I have had um, some inquiries as to um, open space subdivisions and the fact that we don't really have cluster open space subdivisions. So um, that was something that I, I said, well, maybe I'll talk to them about that as well. So, uh, so I mean, we have open space subdivisions, but the open space cluster subdivisions really, you know, creates like the same amount of lots that you would have for the whole space, but maybe at maybe they're quarter acre lots. So you basically have smaller lots, less infrastructure, and more open space. And these are because people are not so much wanting to buy the big lots with the house on it anymore. They they want the little, the nice house with a little lot, but a lot of space, open space around them. Yeah, because they don't want the work. So, yeah, and this yeah, way, that, that would that would be along the same lines that like I was thinking for our um, in, industrial park that that has a lot of wetlands there where Ooh. it doesn't support s significantly large facilities that need a lot of parking but it has little cluster areas where you can put you know small complexes of houses and and relatively close together and all you have to do is really thread a, a, a road you know across yeah. those wetlands yeah. and, and then you have all these little pockets of, of developable land but not anything that you can build a big 100,000 square foot facility with, you know, mm -hmm. 250, right. you know, parking spaces. So well, you, you could use the old uh, golf course yeah. property. Correct. But but that's exactly right. what yeah. I was talking about when I was thinking about already, that kind of development you there. You already got a bridge over uh, the, the greenway there for the old golf course. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. In the when, industrial park. It was uh, supposed to be a golf when, course. When we built Laughlin Road, and you guys changed it from R44 to R88. You know how much money that cost this town in 30 years when they got to put all the new infrastructure in and the roads and the sidewalk? Mm -hmm. We could have done the same amount of houses with half the roads, same taxes and everything, and had twice the open space. Right. And it's ridiculous. You know, these houses with two and three acres for one house, the sidewalks are 300 feet long. That's insane. And people need to think about that when you decide, you know what, I like the pretty trees, change it from R44 to R88. That's wrong. You know, and, and now the town has got to pay for all these big open developments with these roads that the tax can't support just the infrastructure of having to repave the roads. That's what I say. We, I, our, I agree with you 100%. Our regulations on that, need so catch up with what's going on in, in the world. Uh, it's ridiculous because yeah. everything comes along. We've got to go into the to the regulations and change them to fit our needs. Instead of people can come in and and we're we're ready to meet their needs instead of I don't right. Know, so th crazy. this is you know something that's happening in a lot of towns as well. So you know they, so I I may be working on some regulations for your perusal as well for the cluster subdivision. That's later. We got the other ones to worry about first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, concurrent, you know? You're always working on many you things keep at looking once. looking at the regulations, you'll never get to Well, oh, we're, that's we're, right. we are what? asking for money for, uh, well, I've, I've requested funding to have the zoning regulations rewritten, literally, from scratch. So that's really what we need to do. Outside to yeah, we're, I we'd certainly need to have a consultant before, to guide I, us. Or, I really didn't think that so, well. You know, I, you know, obviously it's part of the budget, but I know the Economic Development Commission <laughs> is also on board with it because it really, you know, if, if our zoning regulations are, are user friendly, um, then we'll get more development yeah. and better and the development that we want rather than what fits into our regulations. So. Well, okay. Motion. Uh, no, uh, application to be received now. Is he all set and he's got his uh, graphic um, study? We So we wrote um, a report to him. We went through all the zoning regulations and gave him comments um, and told him to um, revise a couple of sheets and he's going to get us that along with the uh, traffic study uh, hopefully tomorrow. So if we receive that, then we can move forward. Okay. So it should be all set to go well, for the next Well, he should know meeting. because this isn't his first time here. 
It's about the 20th, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just pride. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I guess any uh, issues or opportunities unresolved? What? Can I make a motion we adjourn? Second. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank <laughs> you.